Hello you guys, what is going on? It's Creative and today in Once Human I'm going to show you how to make much better weapons and how to upgrade your weapons overall to make them a lot more powerful. There's a lot of different mechanisms for upgrading and crafting weapons in Once Human and I'm going to show you how to make amazing weapons so you don't make the same mistakes that I did. To start off as you progress in Once Human, you're eventually going to drop in and start at Deadsville. Once you complete a lot of the Deadsville area, you're then going to drop down over here into the Broken Delta and go over to Myers Market. Once you complete Myers Market, you're then going to come up here into Greywater Camp. These three areas are essentially known as the tier areas. So this will be tier one. This is essentially going to be tier two. And then up here at the Iron River will be tier three. These are all going to correspond essentially with the weapon materials that they drop. So each tiered area and the surrounding areas within will drop that tier's worth of materials. So if you can see, if we come over here to the workbench, once we go in here, you can see each one of these is going to require different materials to create. Now, these materials don't specifically say what tier they are, but again, if you're crafting a weapon that is a tier three weapon, it'll take tier three materials, which typically will be gathered again in that Iron River or tier three area. So those will be just scavenged through regularly playing the game and gotten via your disassembly bench. So again, once you collect some materials, you come here, disassemble those materials, and you will get the appropriate tier of material for whichever area you got that loot in. So as you level up, there are different tiers of weapons. Essentially each different weapon type has multiple different tiers. So tier one is obviously going to be your starter tier, tier two and tier three. Now again, you can continue doing this all the way up until tier five. And once you get to tier five, this is currently the highest level of weapon that you can create. And again, will require you getting tier four and tier five materials via the tall grass in area once it unlocks and the black fell area. So again, you will start initially with the gear workbench. But again, once you start wanting to craft tier three and higher weapons, you're going to need to create the intermediate weapons workbench and replace that one. And then again, you're able to craft that stuff right here and select the tier you want to craft and then obviously use the materials. That's currently how the tier system works. Again, the higher tier the weapon, the more powerful, obviously. Now we're going to check out the skill tree or the memetics as it's known as in once human. So you can see here, you can unlock a bunch of different stuff within skill trees, but it's important early on if you do want to go ahead and unlock a majority of the weapons to use. The crafting memetic skill tree has two branches here on the right. Now these are going to be for weapons and some of it's going to be for ammo. So for the weapons, you're going to unlock your gear workbench here. This is going to be your typical gear workbench that you're going to make regular tier one or two weapons with. Then once you get down here, you can start unlocking your basic gear. You'll then unlock your shotguns here, your assault rifles, and then your intermediate gear workbench that again allows you to craft those tier three and higher weapons. Then you can unlock sniper rifles, rocket launchers, and light machine guns. You also want to make sure you're crafting at the same time or around the same time. The ammunition type memetics, for instance, the ammunition one gives you copper ammo, advanced ammunition one gives you copper AP ammo, and then ammunition two gives you steel ammo. Steel and the copper AP ammo does significantly more than the previous versions. So every chance you get to upgrade your ammunition, you're gonna be doing a lot more damage with better ammunition. Next, I wanna talk about blueprints and unlocking actual individual weapons because it's kind of confusing, especially if you're new to Once Human. So you can see in the weapons workbench, some weapons like the pistol only have one unlocked. Other weapons like the shotgun, I have three unlocked or again, three or one, it all depends on your blueprints. So the way it works in Once Human, you don't just grab and find a blueprint and unlock that weapon. The way it actually works is you find blueprint fragments and then those fragments combine to unlock the blueprint. You can see this is the Memento pistol. If you look in the top right, that says zero out of 80 fragments. That means we haven't found any fragments to actually unlock this blueprint. Once you find enough fragments to unlock the blueprint, you can then fuse it and then you can craft the item or essentially fusing means to learn the blueprint. So you can see one like this where the icon is gold right here. That means we have found enough blueprint fragments to unlock this individual blueprint. So once we actually fuse or learn this, that means we can now craft that pistol. So you can see if you check the blueprint fragments right up here in the top right, if you click that, you can see it'll show you all of your BPs that you've unlocked and all of the BPs that are currently locked that you can fuse together 
and unlock. So you can see if I want to go through these tabs, I can look and see which one of these I have fragments for, which ones I can actually unlock and which ones I can lock. So let's say for instance, in this case, we wanted to learn the long ax. All we would have to do is hover over it, hold the F key to fuse that. And you can see it now unlocks that blueprint for us to actually come in here and craft this item. So now if we go over to our melee weapons, we can now craft the long ax BP in any one of the tiers that our workbench will essentially allow us to do as long as we have the materials again to do so. And again, you can see the large damage jump from tier three at 520 to tier four at 812. It's a, it's quite a big difference. Now the next big question, if you're talking about unlocking weapons is precisely how to get these blueprints individually. So there's a couple of different ways. A lot of the different ways are by doing specific events. So events and things like completing strongholds. So for instance, completing areas like this upon getting the mystical crates, once you find the mystical crate in an area that will typically give you some sort of blueprint related reward. Also completing other things like for instance, these securement silos across the map, they will also give you those rewards typically. And again, other things like monoliths can also give you blueprint rewards. There's a bunch of ways to get these throughout the map. Now, another way to get blueprints, which is a lot of people's ideal favorite way currently is the wish machine is once you get to the tier three area over here in Iron River, once you go to Great Water Camp, you're going to be rewarded with the wish machine BP, which allows you to then craft one and put it in your home. You can then make a spin on it. Now the wish machine in Once Human at the bottom, you can see a couple different prize pools that are available. Basically, you start off with the first initial prize pool available. And as the season continues, meaning you continue, go from week one to week two to week three, more of these prize pools will unlock as time goes by. And again, you enter those new weeks or portions. You can then select one of these areas and then use your star crumb up here, which is your basic currency you get for a lot of in-game activities to draw. And once you draw, it essentially gives you a random prize. And again, the more of these areas you unlock, the more jackpot rewards and higher rewards they contain. But essentially each area is gonna give you different BP. So you can see here, if I jump in here and I draw one of these at 500 star crumb, it will then give us an animation. Or if you decide to skip the animation, you can see it will give us specific blueprint fragments for random pieces of gear. So you can see we got 10 here. It requires probably more than that. You can see the gear blueprint actually requires 15 to complete. So if we find one more of these, we'll be able to unlock this piece of gear. Now the next thing is enhancing your blueprints. So the way you can actually enhance your blueprints is if you go into your inventory. Now let's go into our blueprint menu. So here you can right click on a blueprint and select any blueprint you want. Then right here under our BP unlocked section, you can see here that we can select this blueprint that we've already unlocked, but maybe we want to upgrade it. And the way that system works is again, these stars that you'll see on the weapon. It's currently a one star, but we can upgrade it to a two and a three star to make it even more powerful. Again, with some of these weapons, like these legendary ones, you can upgrade it up to a six star item. So again, if you can see, we come in here to our blueprint and the way this works is we currently have 27 out of 60 fragments that we can use. And you can see these are fine fragments. So they're giving us three XP each. And you can see our XP meter here in the bottom right that it's gonna take to upgrade to get additional stats. You can see if we drop this fragment amount down, we don't have enough fragments to actually upgrade this. But then if we drag this up, eventually we get enough XP to be able to upgrade it, enhance it and enhance these stats. And again, that star level that's up here at the top. Keep in mind, if you have fragments for this individual weapon itself, that those fragments will actually be worth more XP in general. And otherwise, if you use fragments that aren't meant for the weapon, again, you get less XP overall. But this is how you can use fragments to upgrade your blueprints to make the base blueprint of the weapon much more powerful. Again, it's probably best to save some of these fragments. So that way, once you start unlocking the purple and legendary weapons and you find a weapon you really like, you can use your fragments to upgrade this weapon to max out its blueprint. Next will be calibrating weapons. So you can see if we come up here to the workbench and we hit J, we can actually go into the calibration menu. Now, one important thing about calibration is you can upgrade, especially higher level or higher tier weapons a lot of times and it can make them significantly more powerful overall and when i mean significantly i mean quite a lot so you can see upgrading this once with just some steel ingots takes our damage from 112 to 119. now one thing to keep in mind here especially early on it doesn't necessarily really hurt you to calibrate 
very powerful weapons if you get them and that's for one reason because if you get a weapon and you then get a more powerful weapon let's say i get a legendary scar i'm going to use the legendary scar more than likely so then i can disassemble this one but it doesn't give you that many materials if you spend the materials to calibrate this weapon you can actually get all of those materials back. So you can see the decomposition return right here is 100%. And it tells you that silver materials gives you 100% of your materials back. Blue materials give you 70% and legendary gives you 50% of them back. So as long as you upgrade and calibrate with these silver regular materials, you'll be able to get them all back if you actually disassemble this weapon later on when you no longer need it. I'll go ahead and calibrate it. And then we go up to 120 damage. You can see now if we calibrate it, it's going to cost this material and our Stardust source, which is a very valuable resource. Again, you can also do this with armor and you can do the exact same thing. Another thing to make weapons even more powerful is to mod your weapons. And one important thing about modding weapons is you should always and I mean always have mods on your weapons. So even when you're level one, even when you're level 10, 15, level five, basically your gear is gonna have these mod slots. You can see here by this odd circle rectangular shape. I don't know exactly what that's called, but each spot has an option to put a mod on a weapon. So you can see this purple one has a spot to put a mod just the same as this green sniper has a spot to put a mod. Basically every piece of the gear will have a mod slot. So as soon as you start unlocking mods, make sure to put them on your gear because it makes you much more powerful pretty instantaneously and it's free to do so and swap them out. So one thing to mention about mods, and this is kind of confusing to me at first, again, especially if you're new, is this is a tier three scar, right? The max level that the mod has. So you can see again, this mod is it has a tier three mod on it. It can go on a tier three weapon. And that's the same exactly for a piece of armor. Again, this is a tier three helmet and we could put a tier three mod on it. You can see the max random attribute there is a tier three mod. And you can again see this is a tier two piece of gear. For instance, we only have a green one on because we can only put a tier two mod on that tier two piece of gear. And if we actually unequip this and try and put it on, you can see it will not let us. Now, some important things to look out for in terms of mods, specifically, these three stats are very good early on. Obviously, weapon damage percentage and armor mods that give you things like HP or crit damage are very important again early on. We're doing a lot of crits, a lot of headshots and a lot of weak spot damage, especially again with headshot damage. So this can give you a lot of overall damage boost just for putting on free mods, even if you don't need them because you can take them off later and reuse them absolutely for free. And now you can actually enhance a mod and increase some of the actual tier effects that it currently has by right clicking enhance on that actual mod. So if you find one you like, but you want to change one of the stats, essentially you can right click on it and hit enhance. And then you can see it will consume a certain amount of tokens and you can see it will consume some of our energy. If you want to enhance this mod and you can see you can actually increase the quality of one of the random attributes and you can see it will jump up here, not, not to go over the actual tier quality of the mod itself, but again, it enhanced one of these randomly. So now we have more damage against great ones as an additional effect on this mod at a much higher level. Now, in order to get the actual tokens or materials that's acquired for that, you will go to your disassembly bench. You can go to this right section here for your cards. And you can see as we select different cards to actually disassemble, we get those weapon mod info units, depending on what mod it is. It's either a weapon or it's an armor mod info unit. You can then disassemble those, get these materials and use those to upgrade your existing mods that you want. And you can disassemble the ones that you don't want. Next is weapon attachments and weapon attachments again are a super powerful way to really upgrade your gear in once human, especially to make your weapons super powerful and OP. So once you go to the accessory tab, you can see your list of basically empty starters on a lot of weapons for attachments. Once you click into these, you can see the different attachments that you're able to actually unlock. Now there's specific ways to unlock these attachments and I'm going to show you the two main ways. The first way is going to be to find riddles. Riddles are scattered across the map and they'll essentially be marked by things like four cones on the ground that are glowing. If you've ever seen that before, that and other things like that are they're essentially riddles that you can find throughout the game. Basically, when you find those, make sure not to skip them because once you complete them, those will essentially result in the unlock of, again, one of these individual attachments that you can see here on this weapon. And you can actually see if you're looking for a very particular attachment, you can then find that attachment. Let's say we want this extended break. 
you can see it actually tells us how to go and get that. And we have to explore the riddle spot Eye Balloon in West Lone Wolf Waste. That's one of the main ways to do this and get that attachment for free without having to go and spend a bunch of currency. However, if you do want to try and buy one of these attachments with currency, just as an example, you can go to one of the places like Deadsville. So once you arrive in one of these towns, there are essentially different vendors scattered across the town. Certain ones will give you certain mods or attachments that you can buy as long as you find the correct one. So you can see if we look in his menu, we have a bunch of different attachments here for weapons that we can actually learn and we can use those to put on our weapons. So one specific thing is this currency is known as Stellar Planula. Now you actually unlock this by doing different missions throughout the world. Again, things like completing strongholds, dungeons, completing monoliths, etc. You can get this currency just throughout playing and doing a lot of those big event type things. We could come in here and spend our currency on that and get the attachment that way. I want to mention your cradle abilities. These will be unlocked once you complete a certain story mission far enough in the regular story. And you can see here when we go into the cradle menu, there are a bunch of different effects that you're going to unlock. Now you start with the first row and from there on you have to collect unique deviations to unlock the rest. Meaning we need two unique deviations, meaning they can't be the same. Once you do that, you unlock all the way up to here and have all of these unlocked. And then on the right hand side is where you can actually slot these abilities. And these abilities are very useful and give you pretty big damage boosts overall. So the more you slot in, the quicker you're going to progress. Now these individual bubbles will essentially start to unlock, but to unlock them, you actually have to complete securement silos. What those look like on the map is essentially as you're continuing throughout specific areas, you're going to find this icon on the map, which are again, securement silos. They act as essentially dungeons that you can complete. Once you can complete, once you complete that individual securement silo, you're then going to unlock the appropriate cradle spot here on the right hand side, and you can then place abilities into them. Make sure if you see one and you think you can do it, you go ahead and do it as quick as possible. So you can put a lot of these abilities over here because again, they give you pretty big increases to damage again, 20%, 20%, 30% in a lot of cases or 25%. So the quicker you unlock these and slot these abilities, the faster you're going to progress through once human. And finally, the last thing I want to talk about is different weapon effects, different weapons, especially higher tier legendary and purple weapons will have different weapon characteristics and effects on them. Some of these will be basically active and passive effects that will help you while you're actually playing. So for instance, if we look at any one of these weapons, for instance, this legendary LMG, the Predator, this is gonna give us a ton of different weapon characteristics that we can actually take a look at. So for instance, this weapon, when hitting an enemy acre, it's a 40% chance to trigger fast gunner, meaning we shoot much faster. We also get shooting within 0.8 seconds after a kill consumes no bullets, saving us a lot of ammo. Hitting the damage target consecutively grants additional damage. And when the mag is more than 50% full, we get additional damage. A lot of these individual and higher level weapons for blueprints that you have to unlock will contain a bunch of individual characteristics. So it's a good idea to keep in mind kind of which weapons you're trying to go for, even though some of the gathering of these blueprints is completely random. Something like this might give you an idea of really which weapon you really want to go for. So hopefully by the time you get it, you have something that you're hunting for because you know how good it's going to be to help you kind of spec out how you're planning to make your build overall. And again, don't forget if you unlock cosmetics to make your weapon very pretty by putting nice little stickers on them of kittens and then painting your weapon a beautiful desert brown or whatever colors hopefully we eventually unlock that are really cool that being said those are all the tips i can give you on how to get better weapons and make your weapons really really good and op in once human eventually once you level up if this video helped you drop a like down below subscribe to the channel we're going to be posting more once human videos very very soon that being said i'll see you guys in the next one thanks